Our job is to help the Knights of Light tonight to give you information and also when there is fire out on the ground in your area, you'll see us travelling around out there and we're more than happy to talk to you. We are trying to give you as much information as we possibly can and I will be honest and a bit up front, the information that I have tonight is rather skin and a little bit tight but hopefully I can give you what you need for down here. Now tonight we have with us Mark Greenhill. Mark is the Mayor of Blue Mountains and he is also a member of the Rural Fire Service. Mark, would you like to speak to us? Now, I've got the microphone positioning right, so hopefully the people outside can hear me. Can you hear me outside? All right. Five weeks ago, um, I made the decision to run for Mayor of the Blue Mountains and I didn't think this would happen. We are in the grip of a bushfire situation, and it is a significant one. Uh, about 210 local families have lost their homes. We have about 109 homes further damaged. The vast majority of those homes were in the Windmalee, Yellow Rock, Spring. to a safe situation. Can you still hear me outside? Good. So what tonight is about, is about, it's about information. You and I as, as citizens, and I want to thank the IFS and the and, uh, Incident Management Team for setting up this meeting. There'll be a lot of questions we'll all ask after this is over. About all sorts of things. But tonight isn't the night for that. Tonight, is about your safety. Tonight is about information relating to the current fire situation. And tonight is about you being able to ask questions of people who know about what's happening uh, in our city right now. Can I thank uh, our federal member, Louise Marcus, and our state member, Rosa Sage, for being here tonight, Senator Doug Cameron, my council colleagues, friendly Christian Anton von Schoenberg, for being here tonight. Louise and Rosa will speak before questions. But I want to acknowledge another special guest in the room. And the special guest in the room is a collective. And it is all those men and women who belong to the volunteer firefighting services. Can I acknowledge your presence?
we will be okay, and you and I will all see each other again in happier circumstances. Thank you for coming in, so many, in such vast numbers tonight. Thank you very much for your concern about the current uh, situation we find ourselves in. And I hope that we all see each other very soon in much happier circumstances. Good on you. Thank you, Mark. Ladies and gents, the sort of things that we do want to cover tonight is for your safety over the coming at least minimum 24 hours, probably somewhat more than that. Now, the thing that I coordinate down here in this sector has been hanging out being booked for quite some time, and in fact we've given out just on 5,500 of them through local markets, other meeting places. There was a box here tonight, they did not last long, and these are available on the RFS website. The RFS website is www.rfs.nsw.gov.au. There are a number of other sources, which I think Mark is putting up for us now. Um, one of those that, that, that obviously is, in my mind, one of the best is Radio 702, the ABC. They are going to constantly give reports, and as the fire moves, they will give updates. And the more critical that fire gets, the more frequently they will give updates. There's also, obviously, the radar of the television stations. Uh, we have Channel 7 here tonight. Uh, one of the ones I've been watching lately. Uh, we also have ABC and 24, which are constantly. All three of those are constantly giving updates across the bottom of the screen and on the seven, you are getting a constant feed of updated information on what is currently happening. So that's the report as well. The advice that is coming out now is tomorrow is going to be a very, very unpleasant day. Now, to this point, we have tried our best to protect our local area. This was just worked last week. We did a major effort for a backburn around the Mount Murphy area so that that is protected from a fire approaching from the western direction. Today I've been up in the Rose Road Chapman Parade area and we have had a massive backburn through there. Big backburns are being conducted right across the mountains to try and protect each and every community. It will be an ongoing event. We have also tried to put what we call a black line across the growth data. At this stage, I'm told that we've got 80% in. Uh, we have tried it in the past. We've actually been successful and we have been able to stop the fire. And then down the growth data, which is I'm sure we are all aware, is currently in the growth and it is going down. Uh, what tomorrow is going to bring is, is I suppose, anybody's guess, but it's better. Now, what we're suggesting, if you have a fire plan which says that you are going to leave, and there are two sections in our fire plan on pages 16 and 17, one is a stay and defend plan, the other one is leave early and go. What we're suggesting is the leave early decision is to leave by our staff. One of the potential issues that we have is we have so many areas in the mountains where you have one street out, one road to get out of where your home is. If something happens where there's an accident or smoke is just so bad that it brings that road out, or for some reason the road is closed, I'll give you an example of probably experience that last night. You need to be able to get out. The best way out, obviously, is down the Great Western Highway. But bear in mind, we haven't been to it there. All it takes is to sum up the little over the dirt and stay. We have an accident, and what happens? The highway's closed. So, guys, please be careful. Please take the time and please step on out as early as you possibly can. What we're suggesting is out of the area, if you can, for 24 hours. Uh, if you have friends or family in the city area, Several reasons. One is for your safety, but it's also to allow us to do our job. 
There are red trucks here, there are white trucks here, there are white range of colour trucks here from almost every state on the East Coast. Those guys have given their time and they are all volunteers to come to us and it's an awesome exercise and we have. Those vehicles are travelling on the roads, quite often under lights and sirens, and if you see a vehicle coming under lights and sirens, please do that for them and let them through. They are going to defend somebody's home. It will take you only seconds longer to get where you're going if you pull over and let them through. Now I can honestly be sure that that has not been happening. So please, let them through. Up on Hawkesbury Road on Thursday night, when the whole area there has been impacted extremely severely, we have people who have parked cars on the footpath, on the curb, and in the first lane of the road. And it then left the cars. We had fire trucks, we had all sorts of emergency vehicles, ambulances, a lot, trying to get through that into the room on one piece of the road. Okay. So far, as Mark said, we have lost a significant number of homes. Part of my role is out talking to people where they are gathering. And on Thursday night, I ended up out of the reception of Hawkesbury Road and Tickle Creek Road. Where the first star of the road they were around, some of them 130 people there. They were people who were a lot of those who had come out of single groups. And they didn't know that they had a home to go back to, and a lot of them knew that they didn't have a home to go back to. And some, as the police were telling people, they were on the road just trying to make sure that we didn't have problems with people going and buying things. Um, they were coming back and they were telling us about the ones that were gone. And I've got to say, I'm human. I have a tear going down and she's got to some of the people. This can be very, very emotional in dealing with that. So, those people survived. There's one chap there, and I really feel for him because he was hurting really badly. And he said to me, mate, if you let me stay here, I may still have a house. Now, I put a lot down at the state that I was in. I wasn't real nice as I could have been, I suppose. And I took back to the mate, if I let you stay there, we probably can't have a third big person. That's what we don't want. If, if a police officer or an SES person or one of us in the yellow uniform says to you, leave now, please don't make it hard. Leave now. And that's why we are suggesting tomorrow morning, it may not be for nothing. It may be, you may get down there and discover that the fire doesn't come down. All right, that's why you've had a day out of the mountain, so you're away from the smoke, you're away from the stress to some extent. Then you come home, and hopefully all three or four of you come home. But hopefully you're going to as well. I've like just kept my mind up with my wife and I think. Guys, just want to run through some of the things you can do for yourself before you go. Uh, we are hoping to have a memory stick arrived very shortly. It's on its way, and we did have a presentation that's been prepared for us. And you and I can watch it for the first time together when it arrives. Some of the things we're going to suggest that you do tonight is just have a quick walk around the house, move anything away from your home that you think is combustible or could create fire. Or first thing in the morning, when you're up at five o'clock before you leave before lunch, <laughs> have a look around the house and see if there's anything you need to move away. Now, what we're suggesting is to move it down the back of your block, but not next door to your neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> it might save you the time to have a friend to neighbour for a time. <laughs> We're also suggesting that you walk around the outside of your house. And you know where the edges are, but they're in under your house, or if you've got any open exposed area, if you can close that off somehow. Um, you know, People talk about that. We recommend putting screen mesh across those vents. But it must be the stainless steel or the, the, the type of mesh that doesn't burn. The type you use on fly screens, but I ask that it's why I do the second flat. If you have back awning, you know, back decks, and over that deck you have a shade cloth roof, it's up to you. But I saw one of those burning quite fiercely out on single Bridge Road. The house was okay at that stage and we were lucky enough to be able to put that out. But had we not seen it and been able to put that out, we may well have lost that house because 
that mesh catches the falling edges. That, that, that shape block will catch and it will and it burns quite well. Other things around your home, if you have decided to stay in your fence, plenty of water guys, a bath full of water, buckets full of water, and preferably buckets inside, as, because if you set your bucket full of water up out in the yard, around your property, and the fire comes through, you then go out to get the bucket, or you've got a molten bottle of plastic on the ground. We also suggest, if you're going to have a hose hooked up, which is a very, very wise thing to do, that you actually take that hose inside with you as the fire hits. Because if the fire hits and it goes around your body, you won't have a hose. Not only will you have the plastic fitting on your tap. So if you come out afterwards, pop it up quickly and go knocking out the spots of what they are actually doing at the time. The other thing we're going to ask you not to do is not to fly on the roof of your house. Uh, they have been several injuries, broken ankles, etc. of people who climbed on the roof of the house and then brought it down. They won't bring your shoes on, water on it, and it's not like that. Go off the side. And they have been a couple of injuries of that sort. And yeah, the last thing your family needs is for you to be injured and unable to help them. So please stay off the roof. If you are starting to be fed, there is a range of clothing which is recommended. It is cotton clothing or wool. Do not have a nylon or a synthetic clothing on whilst you're out around your property. Even after the fire's passed, do not. Because embers, you're out there, there's still embers falling and they fall on your shirt you are burning. Okay? Uh, cover arms, gloves on hands if you have them. A pair of goggles because the smoke is going to be incredibly thick. As soon as your eyes start to tear up, you will be in. Okay, so a pair of goggles and a hat. Alright, so that you're totally covered. Too much. Uh, we've talked about listening to the radio. Now, there is a fair chance that in an extreme fire situation, we will lose our landline telephone. We will lose mobile phone. We will lose power. If we lose those, how do you listen to the radio? Most people have a motor car. In that motor car is a battery up on those radio. I can't say how long and listen to that. That will go. If you are in your home when the fire impacts, and look, even the best way it can, people can get caught in their home. Secure your home as best you can. Across your doorways, you put towels and bed them down so that it doesn't prevent the embers coming in under the door. Put a nappy, you know, ordinary babies type nappy, and make it a clean one. Slide <laughs> it over, twirl it on the ends, and wrap it around the back of your neck so that you are breathing. Sorry, so that you are breathing through air that is to some extent Okay? Um, if you are leaving, some of the things that you may need to take with you is a change of clothes for at least two days. All of your personal medications and all of your script repeats. Do not leave those behind. You need to have enough money to last you a couple of days and all of your credit cards. Any personal documents that are important, things like your insurance policy. One of the things that, and a comment from a few people that we were talking to up on Tingle Bridge Road on Thursday night, I don't even know when my insurance policy is, I'm not sure who my insurance company is. That makes it pretty hard to lot of claim, but look, if you do have that sort of a problem, there is help available for you. It's been set up, it's pretty low, we'll be able to more about that as we get towards the end of tonight. There is help to help you do it. The situation post uh, tomorrow, we really don't know what's going to happen. And what we're saying to you about tomorrow is only an educated guess. It could be worse, it could be less catastrophic. No, no, I don't that word. Less serious than what we think. There is a term that has been bandied about and it is an accurate term, it's called catastrophic rating. Uh, and there are a series of others. If people want me to run through what the fire danger index ratings are, 
Can I hand you the one? Okay, so it's going to be enough. All right. Five and two, get ready. That's the pack. Okay, we start at the easy end. The easy end is low bottom to high. When you're passing around, you will see these five next things out of the stretch. On a low bottom to high, it says to review your survival plan with your family, keep yourself informed and monitor the conditions. Then we go to severe, and that's where we start to roll. Leaving early is the safest option for your survival. Well prepared homes that are actively defended can provide safety, but only stay if you are physically and mentally prepared to defend in these conditions. You have to be physically prepared on a level one, and I will flag that out very quickly. <laughs> mentally prepared is another issue. The sound of a bushfire coming through is absolutely horrendous. But if you are in your house and you are bunkered down, when you hear it, when you hear windows pop and things like that, have a Don't go outside. Stay where you are because the fire will go over the top and give you time to be out before the house is fully impacted. Okay? Uh, the next level up is extreme. This one, there's only one real option, is to leave. Get out now. If you're not prepared uh, to leave on the day, then we wish you luck. We're saying to you, there are only so many fire trucks on the mountains, even with all the ones from the state. We cannot protect and defend all of the streets, let alone all the houses in those streets. So again, the, the option is, as we've suggested, if you can by lunch time tomorrow, if you have the option, please move out of the area. And the last one is catastrophic. Now, it is highly unlikely, highly, highly unlikely that we will ever see in the mountains a rating of catastrophic. The RFS does not determine those ratings. They are done by the Weather Bureau and a range of people who all work together and a management team who make those decisions and we're being told what the rating is. But for the purposes of, of the lower mountains, extreme is about as hot as I hope it will ever get. And that's that's no time to be. the leading cause of injuries to residents in these six bike situations and I repeat that things don't get on the roof. Um, what I've done is because I live fairly close to the high risk area in uh, Springwood, uh, I've already got my car packed. My evacuation kit is in the car. Personal papers, my hard disk drives with all the uh, Physical photographs, boxes and boxes of the old fashioned 
the copy of this paper is in the car now. And I strongly recommend that you do the same as soon as you can. Um, I'm not saying that you have to leave, but I strongly advise that you do because it's a very hard time this tomorrow. And uh, if you leave it too late, look at the number in here that is usually out of the pack for this hall. Imagine all of you trying to leave at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. What are we going to get? Track it down. All the fire trucks going to get up here. It's difficult to do. So I recommend packing your car now, even if you're going to stay the night. Now, um, I think I'm going to use a volunteer, a volunteer firefighter. Is he not in the door? Is he a volunteer? These guys are my favourite firefighters. Give them a round of applause. The reason I'm doing this is because our most useful firefighting force available to us is you, the community. If you do things right, you're going to get through this. So, what's your name, Holly? Say it again. Oh, Xavier. Give Xavier a round of applause. Uh, I'm going to take this off because it's a bit warm. Huh? There you go. Now, Xavier is demonstrating for us what you shouldn't wear in a fire. <laughs> Have a cut of that. So, let's work from there. Start up. Tell us about the shoes, Xavier. Are they good shoes? For a fire? No. No. Why not? Because they're not closed up shoes. They're not closed up shoes. Look what we wear. Get as close as you can to that. The enclosed shoes. What about your shorts, David? They're short, not long. They're short, not long. Not long. What about this? That's right. Good this guy. Now, look at your face. I don't know. Want to take a guess? You're not wearing a hat. Good. I'll tell you about one here. If you get a little tea towel or a nappy or a piece of cloth, you make sure it's a bandana. Wrap it around. And you'll be a real farmer. What about your eyes? Not sure. That's okay. What you should get is some goggles, and if possible, one to see or go to the face to be so bad. Xavier, you've done well. Give him a round of applause. This is a smorgasbord box and we have no idea what it is, so we will unpack it and we'll try and talk to it. Guys, how many people here have LPG supplies of gas at home or town gas? Okay, what we're suggesting is for those with the bottle of gas, on that bottle of gas cylinder is a vent. It's a round thing with a cross through it. Please have a look and make sure that is pointing away from your home. And if you leave or if the fire comes through, please turn that gas bottle off. And your natural gas supply at the meter, please turn that off. Because that's going to help protect you and it's going to help protect us when we go charging down your driveway in the dark with a hose dragging up the sleep on the line across the line. Okay, what we've got coming up is a map.
So this is the first chance I have to you. We have given you that. Uh,